Kanye West's 10th album, named Donda After His Lay Mother, was released Sunday, August 29th, and has already broken several streaming records, and has reached number one on Apple Music in 152 countries. This album has 27 tracks and is almost two hours long. Among Christians, one big question is, is this album uh, something that Christians should listen to? Has Kanye really changed? And is this a gospel album? Or is this something that we can recommend and be okay with our kids listening to? Let's work it out. I don't typically do music reviews, but this was interesting because Kanye West and his public profession of faith as a pastor is always a joy to see people come to faith and follow Christ. And if Kanye has had a genuine conversion, it's really exciting to see this opportunity. And given his celebrity, his reach and influence, we could have a potential domino effect for his peers to not only hear the gospel, but also see someone that's being transformed by it. This is a great opportunity, but also on the other side of the coin, there's a ton of scrutiny on Kanye from other Christians who question his every move. I listened to this record over the past few days, and I just wanted to share a few of my thoughts on the album. First, the project is filled with featured appearances from folks like The Baby, Marilyn Manson, Chris Brown, Playboy Cardi, J Electronica, and others. Now, this is the first challenge from not only a Christian perspective, but also a moral one in general. Some of these folks have been in the news recently for inflammatory statements, or they're currently being investigated for sexual abuse. I'm sure your ears probably perked up when I mentioned the name Marilyn Manson, for example. In the past, Manson has been associated with the Church of Satan and has strong anti-Christian views. And in addition, Manson has currently been accused of serial sexual assault and battery. So including someone like this on the album, in addition to guys like Chris Brown and others, is certainly not wise no matter how you look at it. When Jesus ate with sinners and tax collectors, he didn't promote their platform or invite them on his stage if they were not true followers. I think this is the first full length album from Kanye West where there's no audible profanity on the album and this should be commended. Um, everything on the album has been censored so the curses are muted but when it's edited like this your brain kind of fills in the holes so I'm not sure if it's better or worse because as you're listening to it you're filling it in with the words that are muted. The first track is called Donda Chant and it's just someone repeating the name Donda over and over again. Donda. Donda, 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 Donda. Hey, look, that's creepy, bro. I mean, on first listen, I was already very concerned and started to think that I wouldn't be able to listen to the rest of it if it was like this first track turned out to be. I read somewhere that it was actually supposed to be reminiscent of a heartbeat that is out of rhythm. Who knows? I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. The next song is Jail featuring Jay-Z. Now I grew up listening to Jay-Z and I believe he's one of the greatest rappers of all time, but you wouldn't know that by this verse. At one point, uh, he, he uses their nicknames and says Hova and Yeezus like Moses and Jesus. <laughs> I had no idea what he meant by that or where he was going, but it was def definitely not his best outing. The first song that I do kind of like on the album is uh, Hurricane, and that features The Weeknd and Lil Baby. And I think it's because of the organ in the background, it really had that gospel feel to it. Uh, in it, however, Kanye apparently admits to, uh, and he takes responsibility for his infidelity and his marriage. So if you don't listen to the lyrics in, in this one or, or many others, um, it's got a real nice groove to it. I had some hope for the song Praise God and it featured Baby Keem and Travis Scott. And this is another one that I really liked the production, but I was distracted by some of the lyrics from Baby Keem, such as, uh, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, bada the bing, bada, bada the boom, I bada the room, I bada the bing. 
Yeah. My favorite track is probably Believe What I Say, and that includes a sample from Lauren Hill, and it's really got this college dropout type vibe. I really enjoyed that track. Actually, the whole last of the album really picks up for me, especially the, the track Jesus Lord with J Electronica. Uh, check out this chorus. It says, tell me if you know someone that needs Jesus, Lord. Now we've been through a lot of things. Tell me if you know someone that needs Jesus, Lord. Man, as, as I was trying to get a feel for what people were saying about the album, I found a few self-proclaimed atheists and agnostics say they really enjoy the album so much that they have it on repeat. And, it, and just seeing that it really got me to thinking, even though this album isn't perfect, I have to believe that people listening to this music and having songs like uh, Praise God or uh, Just Lord or Lord I Need You, uh, if they have these songs stuck in their head, they will ultimately have their hearts softened to the gospel. I've got to believe that uh, even the hardcore atheist or agnostic, that is going to seep into their soul. At least that's what I'm praying for. So what's the verdict? Is Donda sinful or sanctified? I'm going to say that it is sanctifying, if I can hedge my bets. Now, we're all in the process of being sanctified if you follow Christ. And I definitely see changes in the growth of Kanye's music when it comes to his content. This isn't what I would consider a Christian album. While it does mention God and Jesus throughout is really not hope giving, it's not necessarily uplifting, moving or transforming in the way that we would expect as Christians. But does that mean it's bad? Not necessarily. It, it, it might be something that you're interested in musically, but you have to know what you're getting into when you listen to it. It's a fairly clean album, and there are a few tracks that I could see adding to my own playlist and listening to from time to time. I wouldn't say that is demonic like some people would have you believe. As a new believer in the spotlight, we get to see Kanye work out his salvation with fear and trembling, so to speak. I remember when I was a new Christian, it took me some time before the, some of the things in my life to change. You know, it, it really took me a while for me to realize there were some things in my life that wasn't God honoring that I needed to be convicted of. So I can't imagine having so many eyes on me as I continue to make poor choices while I learn to recognize the conviction from the Holy Spirit. So I hope that you would give Kanye a measure of grace that was afforded to you as he grows in his relationship with the Lord. I hope that you will pray that he's being discipled so that he can understand how to walk in the newness of life. And as I mentioned earlier, also we need to be in prayer that hearts will be changed and softened to hear the gospel as they listen to this particular album, despite the fact that it's not full of scripture and doctrine. Pray that God would use it to make himself known.